countdown felt quicker than normal. Uh, episode 70, we're back. It's been a little bit, a nice little break, though, you know. Uh, not a lot of talk, not a lot to talk about, so you can pile enough to where you can make an episode out of it. I think we've done that as, uh, you know, season is what, two months away, a little over? Yeah. So uh, I think it's nine approaching. Weeks. Nine weeks. This off season has not felt very long, even though it does kind of feel like March Madness was like 10 months ago, but not bad. I mean, I, I it, it just sucks to lose in the second round, I guess. So I'll bring that up for everybody to remember if they, <laughs> if they want to think about that again. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there, there's some things to talk about. You got some things that aren't really related to the current team uh, and some things that are related to the current team. And recruiting, as always, uh, you know, a tough one. You never uh, – did we put on here that uh, – What's his face decommitted? We did, I did, but okay. we can say we if you want to. Sure. I mean, it it, it can be a team. <clears> you know, it's been so long be, since we've had a podcast. I forgot how to share stuff on Facebook. So, um, well, hopefully it. your millions of Facebook friends will tune in and <laughs> you know discuss things uh, on here. But I guess we'll yeah. start with the House of Pain thing, which uh, a bit disastrous. If we're being fair. Yeah. Uh. Not. Not great. Uh. You were supposed to go up with me. Backed out last minute, like usual. Um, well, it wasn't that last minute. Me and my buddy, me and my buddy Quinn, uh, went up to Peoria. Uh, it was it was a cool event. Um, I hope they host it next year. Um, I hope they bring back, uh, you know, the House of Pain to Illinois. Uh, a lot of orange and blue in the stands. Um, but yeah, Illinois uh, House of Pain team was not very good. They weren't very deep. They had uh, three guys on the bench. Uh, one of those was was Kipper. And I think he came in, had two turnovers, and didn't play anymore. Um, but uh, Ravante Rice led the team 21 points. Uh, the real shocking thing was uh, Dom, uh, honorary Illinoisan now, um, 11 points on 311 shooting. And Brandon Paul was not good. Um, three of 15, two of 13 from three. Uh, <laughs> just tough. But uh, we got to see. Uh, Bayheim's army play. They played the game before. They ended up winning it all. Um, they almost got beat by forces of soul, seal. Um, yeah. that game. But uh congrats to them for winning. Um it was cool. The whole Illini team, at least most of the Illini team, showed up. Um, got to see Kofi hanging out, uh, taking lots of pictures with the fans. Uh saw DeMonte while we were walking through the hallways. Um, so that was cool to see them there. And then uh, we did see DJ Richardson. I saw he tweeted afterwards that uh, he wants to play next year. So uh, maybe get guys like Trent Frazier, DeMonte, maybe a couple of younger guys to play. And, well, uh, here's what I'll say about this is that a team with a bunch of John Gross players played like a John Gross team. <laughs> Poorly. Yes. yes. That is so, a very you know, the John good Gross comparison. era is something that you want to stay away from. For the yeah. Illini, I mean, you look at uh, Malcolm Hill. Was he on the team this year? No, I thought he was on the team. He um, didn't. For some reason, didn't show up. And another thing was, uh, Ravante uh, Rice was a gross player. Yeah, Ravante Rice was. So I don't know. Um, yeah, Malcolm Hill wasn't there. He played last year. I don't know why he wasn't on the team this year. So interesting. Might have helped a little bit. Don't know how much. But. Yeah, and then uh, Felice had some passport issues. I guess uh, green card. Green card, that's the wrong, wrong word. But, uh, yeah, so he didn't make it back. I think he would have helped out too. Um, but, yeah, they just weren't deep. Um, so, and that, that hurts you when you got, you know, a bunch of guys that haven't played or, you know, that aren't in the best of shape. Uh, McKamey is big um, now. So, yeah, he was struggling. But, uh, yeah, so on to next year. Hopefully uh, they'll get some – a deeper team be back. Like I said, I hope they come back to Peoria because that was awesome. So they may as well get John Gross to coach this team. Uh, I think they're good with Meacham. I, I think they'll be all right. So he doesn't seem to be very doing a very good job on the hot seat. <laughs> yeah. But uh yeah, so uh speaking of coaches, uh Tim Anderson officially joins the staff for the line I um he did uh, tell Jeremy Warner, quote, I haven't been in a gym with this amount of talent, and they work. Um, I know that he trains NBA players, so I don't know if he's just, you know, hyping up the line eye or if he really thinks they're that good. But I'll take it. So 
Um, he also said that he's not looking to be an assistant, make lateral moves, um, made a little dig at Kentucky, I think. Uh, said he wasn't going to Kentucky, Duke, or North Carolina. He wants to be a head coach sometime. Um, and he thinks that he's going to be, you know, doing really well on the recruiting trail. Um, talked about how he had uh, two top 25 classes at DePaul. And, of course, that's DePaul. So he thinks that uh, Illinois will be able to help him get some better recruits or more recruits. So. Well, he can get away with slipping things under the table now, probably, like he did to Paul, I'm sure, to get people to go to that worthless school. Um, oh. Well, what's the point of being nice to DePaul? Remember when we were rooting for DePaul? Else? That was a dark time, yes, it was. <laughs> uh, and then they fell apart, so we kind of ruined their uh, program. But, you know, um, I don't really have much to say about his comments. I mean, it's just like nobody cares if you if you make a lateral move or not. Right. Like I don't know why he feels the need to point that out. Nobody cares. I don't think anybody really knows who you are. Outside I think the it was more college of a, basketball landscape. But if he wants to just say it, then go. I ahead. think it was more of a you know, don't expect me to leave like your last two guys did. Yeah, I agree. I but so I just don't want to bring up these blue blood programs when it comes to our program. You know. Okay. Jeez. Because to be fair, we are a much better program. We get it. True. Um, they can't even touch us. Antigua and Coleman are frauds, but they did some good things for us, I suppose. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. He's not going to get a head coaching job based off of this job, I wouldn't think. Maybe a lower, like a mid Depends on what he's looking for, you know. Um, Sounds like he's shooting for the stars. Yeah, it's all right. So you want the head coaching job don't with DePaul? I'm sure they take him. Don't you want coaches that shoot for the stars? I'd like to be Is realistic. That all you're but... looking for? It's fine, yeah. If he wants to, what am I going to do about it? You know, just <laughs> true. Trying to cut cut some minutes here, get some yeah. minutes going on this podcast. Right. Keep keep it going. Um, I got the, I got something for everything. I'd say the say the biggest news while we were gone. Um, you said that we probably should have had a podcast after this happened, but we didn't. But uh, I O to the Bulls. We had way too many off season podcasts last year. That's why. What do you we think? Didn't do very many this year. Um. I don't think he I should have fallen that far. I'm not surprised. I, I think the biggest – I think that the, was the biggest surprise. The biggest problem that the NBA draft to me has is the fact that they're way too worried about, like, the age of players. Like, they're more right. likely to take an 18-year-old or a 19-year-old over a veteran college player who's 21 or 22. The example of that is that Desmond Bain – who is clearly probably a lottery talent, fell a little bit in last year's first round and had a really good rookie season for the Grizzlies. So just because he was 22 years old, he fell. And it's got to make you wonder about Kofi because if I'm not wrong, Kofi just turned 22 this past week. Kofi um, is going to be picked around where Garza was picked. If I, Kofi yeah, I agree. I agree. And hopefully, you know, he he has the season. and He has to have like a, a Drew Timmy-like season in terms of numbers and – yeah, national recognition to, to yeah. do that because Garza did that and he still fell as far as he didn't. Garza can actually shoot. And I don't know if Kofi's ever going to be able to shoot, even though he seems to always give us evidence that he might be able to every offseason that doesn't do it. Yeah, um, that's what I think. Uh, uh, there was a video and it was uh, Bosman Verdonk just draining threes. But the I think Ryan Foreman shared it. Uh, the best thing to me was Kofi hit five free throws in a row. So, um if Kofi is, you know, 70% of the line will be yeah. huge. 70. He was streaky what? last year though. He had some he good does, games. I mean, he, yeah, when he has the rhythm and he, you know, he's feeling it, he's really good, but, um, but yeah, I O um, yeah, we were on vacation in Arizona when this was all going on. The nice thing was that it was only like nine o'clock when he finally got drafted. Cause it started so early. Um, but man, I just did not expect to see him go that long. Um, I think, you know, Io's probably happy with it. Um, he did tweet out, I'm I'm home and blessed. Chicago, let's go Bulls. Hashtag home team. Hashtag JL4L. Which, You've never you know, seen that before. Jet Life for Life, as they say. Um, his mom Everybody was says that. super excited um, that he was staying home. Um, so, I, you know, maybe this will – they talk about how he's going to have a chip on his shoulder – um, he talked about how he thought he was first round talent. Uh, what do you think of Jason Preston being drafted before Io? <laughs> um, 
you know that might have been the biggest shock to me. It didn't surprise me that much because he's younger by like a year. So congrats <laughs> that, to that, him, right? A whole year, really? Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, I Jason Preston was preference. really good against Illinois. I'm not, I'm not going to downplay that, but it's all about preference. Sure. And the Magic probably think that he has a little bit more. Uh, he to got give traded to the Clippers, so. The Clippers, sorry. <laughs> he did get drafted by the Magic, but he he got traded to the Clippers. See, I was right on that. Uh huh. I, I was just, I, I honestly, I did that on purpose. So you were just checking me. me. Gotcha. Yeah. Boom. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, he's younger, and I think that he showed something in the tournament on a national stage that Io maybe didn't. Sure. Because let's be honest, Illinois only looked like good against Drexel, and Drexel is uh, garbage. So. Yeah. If if no. if Illinois goes farther in the tournament, do you think Io's first round pick? If he if they go further like Elite Eight and he's like dominating or their best player, I think he goes in the first round. Okay. I mean 38th, not that far out of the first round. Right. Right. And it's in a spot where you have a chance to play your first year. Right. And he got he did sign, he got got guaranteed money. I think that's the biggest thing is about being the first round pick, is that you're you get guaranteed money. Um Io Signed a two-year, two point four eight million dollar contract. Uh, other question for you: Do you think he could have made more than yes one point two million yeah. coming back to Illinois with the NIL? Probably within the first five games. Okay, I so. and I agree. I mean, I, but you know, I understand he wanted to be in the league. Uh, NIL just, was still up in the air, I believe. So I know Jared Butler had that like health issue going into it. They didn't know if he'd be able to play due to some condition. And he fell, mm-hmm. but like, look at that! Like, you can win the national championship and be one of the best players and still, str- still struggle to. Yeah, I mean, Dev- Davion Mitchell did not, who you know, right. on ball guard in the country last year. Everybody knows that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he would have made more. Let's be honest; he would have been the superstar. Illinois would have actually and maybe would have had all that Chicago team. money. I mean, he's already doing ads for the lottery and all that stuff, so he'll be fine. Um, he could have got those, I think. Without you want to do this question real quick before we go to the yeah, next? Yeah, we got a question out there. It's on there, yeah, if you want to. I can't see it. See it. All right, there you go. <laughs> How do you feel with trade and signing Chicago made affects his playing time? And, uh, you know, I don't know how much playing time there really was to begin with. I think that you have to, you know, show something. In yeah. The league, which he um, did. But. He- yeah, I think yeah, I think that you know they they signed guard. I think he's going to be you know third string guy, um, but I think he's going to play. I mean, he's just, I mean, he he went from being a guy that you put the ball in his hands in in the NCAA to now he's just going to be a role player, and I think he's okay with that. I think Io has the mentality to be able to do that, um, and you saw it during the summer league games. Um, you know, the first few games, he was kind of off the ball. Uh, six points the first game, 10 points the second game. And then the third and fourth game, they gave him the ball. They let him be the guard and run the show. And he showed that he can score um, 26 points on 11 to 21 shooting in his third game. Seven rebounds, three assists, and a steal. And, that, and, and his defense was really good during the summer league. So um, having a guy that fills in that spot, for them when they need it. Um, and they, I think it's going to be good. Uh, the thing that he really struggled on was three point shooting. I think he shot like 8% from, from three and, and IO could knock down threes in the, in, you know, college, but you move him back a little bit more. He, you know, he just doesn't have that set pure shot. So um, I think he'll be all right, but I, yeah, it, you, you, Saw the trades and who was coming in, um, and he kind of wondered, but I think he'll be fine. Um, He's no listed as a shooting that. guard. I know. He'll That's be weird. behind Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, Alex Caruso. So, you know, not ideal. Um, right. I think he'll be like a 11, 12, and I don't think he'll play very much, but he'll play if the Bulls – are winning games by 30. Yeah. Or losing by 30. Bulls are built <laughs> to run, but with ball. And what playing point and DeRozan Levine being able to play if needed, he's kind of backlogged. Yeah, he is, but 
This is what he wanted. He could have played one more year here. Really enjoyed his time, but yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I can understand it, but yeah, no, probably not. Let's good luck to him. I didn't like. I you know I'm not. I don't follow the NBA that much, so I, I'll watch just to see if he gets playing time and stuff like that. But you know, the hometown story is cool and all, but I think he could have been in a much better place in yeah. terms of team that he could have. I mean, there's four or five guards that the Bulls will play over him, maybe six. Do you think that he would have – I mean, of course he didn't want to fall, but do you think he would rather be with the Bulls than any other team, though, just because he is from Chicago? That's a tough question. You might want to ask him that. Uh, well, <laughs> try to get him on the show. That didn't work out. So, <laughs> um, I think that he – I feel like most players would rather have the playing time, right? I mean, sure. Just because you're from Chicago doesn't really mean that that's the best situation for you in your career. Um, I don't know what other team he could have gone to—a team that sucks that could use a point guard, probably, or a shooting guard, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call him. Even though I think he's much better as a point guard in the NBA over shooting guard, but whatever. These people don't know what they're doing, and they just list him as a shooting guard and go with it. But yeah, yeah. I don't know, Kobe White. Is who he was talking about on the other post. So, gotcha. I think that's uh, good for the IO portion. Yeah. Congrats to him. You know, congrats. Yeah. Um, other little thing I'm nugget, I'm going to throw out there. Uh, Georgie did play with the Nuggets. Um, had four points his first game, three, three rebounds, three turnovers, five fouls. Very Georgie like. Um, he had six points over three games and a block. So, yeah, we all know he's going to be playing overseas. Yeah, he's going to go overseas. Um, and uh, I think that's pretty quick, good for this question, right? Before that, real quick, yeah. um, Georgie played with the Nuggets, who got absolutely pumped by the Suns in the playoffs. Just wanted to throw that out there. So, <laughs> of course, good for him there. Uh, yeah, this question interesting. Expectation for pain this year? Better version of Georgie? No, because he's nothing like Georgie. <laughs> so better than Georgie. I think he's better than Georgie. I don't think he's anything like Georgie in terms of the way he plays. I think that he, he can't teach that footwork. He's not going to have. I agree. Footwork. I agree. Um, yeah, the moves, the little baby hook. Um, hopefully, he has a stronger, you know, post move. I guess than Georgie. Uh, the real, th the thing that I really like about Payne is this defense, um, and that's where Georgie always struggled. He always seemed to get beat. Um, he wasn't great around the hoop. Um, playing defense. So I think him coming in um, with, you know, him and Kofi switching out that spot, uh, he's not going to be the scorer, but Illinois is going to have plenty of scores. So I, I, I think that he personally, I think he's an upgrade from Georgie. Um, yeah. It doesn't have the footwork, but defensively is where Georgie struggled a lot. Um, and, and hopefully pain isn't, as I want to say black hole-ish as Georgie, because it seemed like Georgie would get the ball and and then get lost in the sauce. Um, so I think he's an upgrade. Um, yeah, just nothing. I don't really think he's going to play the same role. I mean, do we can was Georgie the backup five last year? Because it seemed like he came in at the four a lot and they kind of ran he, a different type of lineup. Sure. Um, but you're gonna have you're gonna have guys that can play the four more this year too with Hutcherson, Hutchison, Hut yeah, um, and, and Grandison, Hutcherson and Grandison. I hate that their names are like that, but um, I think they're gonna have more options at the four, and then Coleman Hawkins too. Uh, a lot of people are really big on him and and how much he's improved. So um, I don't think that I don't think that he's gonna. I think they tried that with Georgie to be the five, um, which he did his freshman year, but it didn't work out when Kofi went out and he was at the five. I honestly think they played better when they were on the floor together, which I don't think we'll see with Payne and Kofi as much. But Yeah. Uh, on to the next. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're good. Kendrick Nunn, I just want to put this in there, uh, joins the super team of the Lakers, signs for one year, $5 million. I was always a big fan of Nunn, um, so I just want to throw Not it out gonna there play. that he gets to go play with uh, LeBron and all his boys. So um, Yeah, uh, they're not going to win anything. <laughs> um, I had a list of like four or five offers Illinois threw out, and then when I went through last night and was looking at them, um, all the guys have had um, their like top eight, 
top four or whatever. Illinois was on none of them. So I just threw those offers out. Uh, the only offer I got is Xavier Booker, which Tim Anderson is recruiting him. He's class of 23, 6'10", forward from the Cathedral in Indianapolis. Um, he's, for some reason, he's unranked on 247, but maybe I was looking at the wrong thing. Uh, Rivals has him as 37. So... Uh, name to look out for class of 23. Again, we don't, we don't try to deep dive into recruiting as much, but you know, we need to kill time. Right. So let's throw that out there. Yeah, for sure. For um, sure. Never heard of him. Not going to come here. Hope, hopefully he enjoys his time at Kansas state and uh good. For him. <laughs> All right. On, on to the only guy that Ethan wants next year. Uh, AJ Casey announces his top eight. Um, Illinois makes it thankfully also Marquette, Florida, Gonzaga, DuPaul. Wow. Michigan, Ohio state, Memphis. Um, and then Illinois also made, uh, Ty Rogers top nine, which I don't even think we've talked about this guy. Um, so yeah, it sounds like a football player, but whatever. he's from Michigan. He's six seven, 195 pounds, and he's the number one player in Michigan. So, anyways, making some making some top eights, top nines. AJ um, Casey better come here. The program is done. AJ Casey is the only one we care about. So, get him come on, on over, out. AJ. Uh, we can vent him right here, right now. Better recruiters <laughs> than most of those guys. Yeah, uh, I thought this was interesting. I had a buddy text me about it. Um, Curbelo next year in the mock draft, they have him going 32nd. I know it's way too early to throw these out here, but, uh, you know, do you see Curbelo being done after this year? Yes. Really? Yeah. Gone. Yep. Okay. And what kind of season do you think he has to have to be gone? 16, 10, 2. No, 16, 10, 7, 16, 10, 5. Uh, we'll go 43, 32, 88. Are you just the, saying numbers right saying. now or what? 16 <laughs> points, 10 assists, <laughs> 6 rebounds, 43 He's going to average 16 field. and 10. That's what he has to do. To be like that. a to be like a top twenty pick, forty three percent from the field, thirty two percent from three, eighty eight percent from the line. Do you think that he goes if he doesn't think he's going to be first round? No. Like I said, they have him going thirty second right now. Um, if so, he's mocked at like twenty, I yeah. think he would go. Anything above that, I questionable. Agree. But I think he'll do well at combine tests. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then uh, somehow. Some way, haven't seen him play basketball yet for the Illini. Podzimski is showing up in the in the second round of the mock twenty three drafts. Not sure we could find anything more meaningless than that, but <laughs> we could try. Okay, well, you know, if you ever wanted to write something down on these uh, docs, you know, we can. I wrote sure some good too. stuff at the bottom. So, all right, I'm not blaming you. I'm blaming your friend who texted you that the Podzimski one's stupid, but the, he didn't text me about Podzimski. Oh, he texted okay. me about Kerbella. You could have said that he did just to kind of get out of that. <clears throat> no, I'll take I'll take all the heat on that. So it's gotta make me, right. gotta make you feel good, right? Yeah, not you much know. heat. But... Okay, Reggie Bass decommits from Illinois. Um, tweets out out of nowhere. Quote: With that being said, I will be reopening my recruitment to all schools. Thanks, Illinois, but my recruitment is now open. Yeah, Thoughts. this is why you don't get excited about recruits. I don't early. think – I think that uh, from what it sounds like, it sounds like Illinois said we don't need you anymore. Um, I'm pretty sure I said from the beginning that he was garbage, uh, but whatever. Wow. I don't know if I say garbage. That seems a little bit harsh. Seems like It does guy, seem, but... seem a bit harsh, but um, yeah, so... yeah. Don't get so excited about recruits early, and I don't think these recruits should commit so early unless they're really like, you know sure that number one they're going to get to play and like it and number two that they're sure they want to go to that school yeah but i guess when you when you get an offer from illinois or something and that's where you want to be and so you just commit um he didn't know that they were going to get you know harris and epps and so i don't blame him 
Um, hopefully he goes somewhere where he gets playing time and, you know, can do his thing. So, uh, so Illinois right now has Harrison Epps, uh, AJ store. Not that we care anymore. Uh, did commit to, uh, St. John's, um, wanted to be in a big market is what it sounded like from. Hope he enjoys 19 and 12 seasons missing the tournament. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, Jaden shut, uh, who Illinois was hot after, uh, best shooter in Illinois, they say. Uh, in high school, uh, commits to Duke. So it reminds me a lot of, uh, who was it, John Shire. Um, so anyways, Illinois misses out on a couple guards. I don't know if they need any more guards, so I, I'd like to see them get, you know, power forward or something like that. So I'm okay with it. I agree, big time. Cam Whitmore is an interesting fella. A lot of people were very interested in getting him here. Hopefully mm-hmm. he doesn't decommit, but – when he commits, he hasn't committed. I was going to say, he hasn't committed. Um, he did. I was going to go over this. Uh, the Rivals 150. That, that's fraudulent. The Villanova thing, BS. I have, rivals I have one, people in the know. Okay. Rivals 150 updated their uh, class ranks. Uh, Sincere Harris, who, of course, is committed to Illinois, is at 62. <laughs> Jaden Epps dropped 37 spots to 105, which was pretty shocking to a lot of a lot of people. Um According yeah, they saw him players. get compared to Damian Lillard, and then they watched the clips, and they're like, Jesus, there's no way, and then they moved him back. Okay. Um, anyways. Oh, that's how it happens. <laughs> yeah, uh, Cam Whitmore uh, shot up 79 spots to number 22. And then uh, another guy that Illinois is after, o- Otega? Otega? Owe? Why can't they just re- you know recruit like John Smith so I don't have to – figure out how to say all these people's names anyways uh he's up 52 spots to number 76 um he also visited illinois on the 25th of august um like i said he's 76 nationally he's number eight shooting guard uh right now his warm scale i believe is oklahoma old miss and penn state so i don't know if he's gonna come but uh Anyways, you actually uh, nailed that pronunciation, though. The uh, congrats, and I just mispronounced pronunciation. So okay, sweet stuff. And then the guy you want to talk about, Cam Whitmore, who um, will come to Illinois. Trust me, Illinois has made his top three, uh, along with Villanova and North Carolina. Two crystal balls are out there already for Villanova, which will soon be flipped to Illinois. Let's let's hope. Um, you know, that last minute, you know, phone call or drop off or whatever they do um, might sway his opinion. Um, and then uh, Cameron Cohen uh, is also um, coming to visit. I don't, I don't believe he visited yet. Um, this is a guy that Frazier has been after we've talked about him a lot already. Uh, six, nine, 205 pound, you know, power forward center. He's a three star. And I saw that Derek Piper put a crystal ball in for him on august 21st i'm so, sure he knows yeah sounds like uh yeah he yeah he's in the know right holy smokes you are on one today huh just yeah, i figured you hate on anybody else want. all right i got, got an answer for this question okay how do you think nil affects recruits in terms of marketability of school illinois big program but far off in terms of marketability compared to duke north Carolina, Gonzaga, etc maybe it's my opinion yeah well it is your opinion here's the thing Number one, Illinois is not like a bubble blue blood team. They're not a team that is close to it. They're a little bit behind. So I don't think that it's going to affect them as much as it affects, say, in Indiana or or another team that's like them that I can't think of off the top of my head. I don't think like Oregon, like a team that's not Duke, North Carolina, Gonzaga. Illinois, I think their recruiting is going to stay similar, which is like the four stars, maybe a five star here and there, AJ Casey, um, somewhere in that range. I don't think it's going to change their recruiting very much unless they start to win a lot, then that would change it. But I think the Duke and North Carolina and Kentucky and Gonzaga are still going to dominate the recruiting uh, pool. And there's a reason for that. Whether you want to call it cheating, you want to call it being good, you want to call it's it not cheating uh, anymore. It's well, legal. it was cheating, but, um, <laughs> you know, Auburn I, is very good at that. I think that Illinois could have – it could help a little bit. I mean, just with, I don't think it's going to change it that much. 
the whole state, um, Chicago market, things like that. I think it'll help um, like Duke and North Carolina kind of battling over the same, you know, NIL contracts, I would say uh, with how close they are. So I think that it could help a little bit. I don't think it's going to matter too much. Um, I don't think this NIL is as big as people are probably thinking that it's going to be in terms of recruiting. Um, all the schools are going to be able to get good players money, uh, even though they're not technically involved in it. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't think it's going to affect Illinois recruiting as much. It might, it might help land a guy, um, but not, not very much. Well, there's more to it for a lot of guys in the school that you go to, like playing time and fit and absolutely uh, comfortability, what I believe is the word. Yeah. What the schools need, yeah. teams need. Very few players, I think, or mostly the five star guys come out and want to go somewhere because of what the school is, you know, or right. a four star that might do that, you know, EJ Liddell, um, who shouldn't have gone to Ohio State, but that's a whole nother thing. So some people just love their school. So, um, and, and I just wrote this down. I saw this uh, little thing somewhere. Uh, somebody put out that Brad in his first four years has three top 25 recruiting classes. The only one that wa wasn't top 25 was Kofi's class. So, well, that was pretty interesting. Don't remember anybody else in that class. Yeah. Um, or you forgot. Yep. Don't care. They probably all left by now. We're professionals. We, we know the deal. Um, I just threw this on here. Uh, so the new players this year, uh, the numbers you're going to be looking out for, we got Podzimski, which I, I never smells the name right, apparently. So, uh, go ahead and fix that for me. Uh, he's going to be number zero. Uh, Payne is going to be number four. Plummer following up behind Io with number 11. Thoughts? Don't care. I don't really. <laughs> Melinda's is 15 and. Goody is 10. Well, now you can sell your jerseys, can't you? Now, Melinda's Melinda's being number 15 bothers me a little bit. He strikes me more of as like a 29, 35 <laughs> type player. Okay. But other than that, sure. I think it's fine. Payne 4 is perfect. Uh, Podzimski 0, I don't know who he thinks he is, but whatever. Mm -hmm. I think one of them should have came in and taken like Trent's number and be like, what are you going to do about it? I don't think it's that's how it works. Team building exercises right there. I, don't think that's I want number works. one, and I'm going to take it from you, and there's nothing you could do about it. That would have been cool. And then the Kofi team blows up. Nobody wants to play. And we're due for one of those soon, though, huh? I have seen the team's been, like, traveling together. They've been going to volleyball games, um, doing it's stuff. So college very, stuff, right? Very team-orientated, and I like to see it. Not sure that's the word, but we'll go with it. I don't know. Um, do, you, do you see all schools doing that? Show me a picture of. I don't really think Duke. we pay attention to the other. Show schools. me. A, show me a picture of all the Duke players at a at a Duke volleyball game, please. That's true. They won't do that because they're all busy being five star recruits who are overrated trash most of the time. Uh huh. You know, Illinois bent Duke over last year, so we need it. We need to start a trash counter on these podcasts. See how many times you see somebody's trash. We could do that. I mean, <laughs> if yeah. someone in the comments could count for us, that'd even help more. <laughs> that'd be great. Uh, so, I put these on here. This okay. Is hey, here you're, you're two things. Here we go. Here we go. Coach Underwood, which who the hell cares about this, but I saw it on Twitter right when I was typing, so I figured I'd throw it on here. It'll be on that episode of Hot Ones, a show that I very much enjoy when it first came out. And then I think those anymore? things kind of run its course for me after about 15 of them. Sometimes I'll watch if it's like a really good um, – guest you know i watched the nick offman one and i say that because so you'll probably watch brad underwood is what you're telling yeah me. i'll watch him yeah um i watched the nick is this like offman on tv one. or is it like just in hbo on... max okay it's on youtube i think they still upload them to youtube unless they're too big time for that but i was watching these you know sophomore year in high school not that long ago but still a little bit ago um mm -hmm. yeah nick offman illinois alum shout out to him he was on there i watched that one kevin james you know those types shaquille o'neal but anyway most of the guests in there are complete losers i have no respect for but um yeah underwood you know uh not surprised that he's going to be doing this since sean evans is an illinois alum the host of the of the show uh no. 
you know, kind of – I'm not a fan of the jacket that he wears when he goes to Illini events. That kind of seems like a very Brandon Paul, DJ Richardson era jacket. I think he could upgrade a little bit and maybe wear the jacket. So you got a wear. starter jacket or something? No, it just like it has like the Illini logo. It's like a navy jacket. It has the little Illini logo and like the circle around it. I don't, I don't really like that. I think I had one of those. but Okay. You know, I, I didn't know what I was getting myself into about 10 years ago when I started – being a fan of this team, uh, it was more like 14, but I didn't really pay attention. I did see they were sharing pictures. So, and Brad Underwood was drinking a lot of milk. So, uh, yeah, that's the one you what, want to drink when you do those. What are your thoughts on it? Hot stuff. You like hot wings? No, I, I don't really know. I mean, I know you I, only like cheese on your pizza. So, you, I figured that your it. palate wasn't very, uh, okay. extreme. The Dave Portnoy pizza reviews, he has cheese every time. Why? Because cheese is how you can tell whether a pizza is good or not. It's pretty simple. And I've but had like every frozen pizza. Good? Does it matter? Uh yeah, because cheese is the best way to eat it. Less calories as well. Okay. So, 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 do you even eat like mild wings? When I, I, I don't. I only eat boneless uh, wings, which really aren't even wings. If we're being honest. What's that have so. to do with what sauce you put on them? I don't care. I, I usually kind? do a dry rub. Okay, dry rub. Salt gotcha. and vinegar, lemon pepper. You know the works. Okay. Well, now garlic. that we lost all our viewers talking about that, you want to move on? If I have a sauce, Parmesan garlic, uh, okay. or something like that. Parmesan garlic has a little little spice to her sometimes. The garlic is a little much for me. I don't really like garlic very much. So, gotcha. um, yeah, I had little Caesars the other day. Big mistake. Don't ever go there. That place sucks. The only thing mm. they got going for them is the boxes. But um, <laughs> anyway, um, can he handle the heat? I think he can. I. I'm gonna go I think with no. to a degree, like seven. I think you can get through seven. Okay. So what, how does this work? Like they, they start at one and then they go to ten? I think it's ten. I don't know. They have like their own sauce at the end and it just gets hotter and hotter as you go. The Scoville scale going off the charts. Okay. Um, yeah, and then people usually start to uh, fall apart after about six or seven, depending on the person. They start crying and stuff. and Yeah, some of them are, are pretty good, though. I can't remember any of the ones that – I've seen that were next level where the people had like no problems, but uh-huh. I haven't watched them in a while. So nice. um, I did put this in there. Just I'm glad he's focusing on this instead of the team says every 95 year old Facebook group Illini fan. Yeah. It's pretty much accurate with most Facebook groups, but I want to throw it in there you because know, we're all take, thinking taking, it. you know, two hours to go film a show. Really? Yeah. Uh, I was team. thinking whenever, you know, it's actually it's, good, right? It gets his face out there. Helps yeah. with recruiting. All right. I don't know how much it'll help with the recruiting. I don't know how many basketball players are sitting down to watch hot ones, but it's it's cool, you know, in terms of the uh, hipness of the show, right? I think a lot true, of young, young folks watch it. Um, Very hip. Quick, before we get into the non-conference schedule, what do you think about the football team doing the most Illini thing ever after winning week one and losing week two? Uh, I, You know, the defense was really bad. Uh, UTSA was very up-tempo, and I, that is – pretty much the opposite of most big 10 teams. Um, so I think that they were caught off guard and they had, a, I, I don't want to blame it on art, but uh, there were some passes that could have helped win the game that he just not, he didn't, he didn't make. So he played at Rutgers last year and sucked. What did you expect? I have five touchdowns, 22 interceptions. I know. So yeah, here's the, thing. I don't know. we need Illinois Brandon football Peters will always suck. Let's just be honest about it. Well, it I'm takes a lot Elon more. It takes a lot more to be good in the Big Ten of football than basketball. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, at least we're not as pathetic as Nebraska, right? I know they won this week. They're playing Fordham. I didn't even know they could put together a football team there. So, <laughs> yeah. Nebraska just, actually has like expectations because they were quote unquote good a while ago. I would just take. I would take a 500 Illinois team forever. That's get to a bowl game. Just get to all a bowl I ask game. for. So get to a bowl game, get your ass kicked. That's every time. I like that cycle. It's good. Mm-hmm. All right. Non-conference schedule, two exhibitions, October 23rd, October 29th. They don't know who they're playing for the first one. Not that it matters. And they're playing this Indiana, Pennsylvania type squad in the second <laughs> one. I don't They're playing Indiana from Pennsylvania. Might be a made up team. I don't know. Okay. Well, I, uh, I've November seen this one going around. They get on ESPN and stuff. Bishop Sycamore. That might be the first game. We'll see if we, we take them on. Um, I'm sure, sure that game would be like 94 to nothing in the first half <laughs> since they were losing 30 to nothing to IMG in the first like four minutes of the second quarter. Uh, November 9th, Tuesday, Jackson State is who they play. Game on. Let's go. Game two is uh, November 12th. 
Arkansas State. Then November 15th is stupid Gavit games that nobody cares about. Monday is the day of that uh, at Marquette. So really their only true road game, I guess. It's at, at Marquette, right? Yes. And uh, November 22nd, they play Cincinnati on Monday uh, to start the Hall of Fame Classic in Kansas City. Then they'll play the winner of uh, Arkansas or K-State or the loser, depending on how Illinois plays, I suppose. Um, that's on the Tuesday in Kansas City. November 26th, which is a Friday, they play Texas, Rio Grande Valley. Mm-hmm. So interesting uh, choice to play there. Uh, November 29th, on Monday, they play Notre Dame, Big Ten ACC Challenge, revenge for the stupid loss they had a few years ago to them. Uh, December 11th, they face – is Sean Miller still there? Yes. They let him go, didn't they? No? No, I'm, I don't think so. That loser. Can't wait for that episode to talk about him. <laughs> oh, I think he's gone. Oh, okay. You must have missed that. I thought he was gone. Arizona basketball. He's still there. It said he's there. Or yeah. It said he's gone. Oh, it says he was most recently head coach at Arizona. Yeah, that's what. That's... Huh. Tommy Lloyd is who they hired. I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, exactly. that's right. That's right. Okay. Thank God I don't have to complain about Sean Miller. December 11th, Saturday is that <laughs> game. They better win that one. December 18th, next Saturday, St. Francis, PA. Uh, that's another one. Then December 22nd, Bracken Wright's on a Wednesday this year at uh, oh. St. Louis. Are you going to go to that? Yeah, I don't know. It's on a if you don't, we'll do a watch party. Okay. Deal. And it'll be as insane as last year. Deal. Maybe not as many profanities. I'll try to clean it up a little bit for the kids, but <laughs> we'll see how it goes. We'll play it by ear, I suppose. Uh, December 29th, a Wednesday, they play Florida A&M. Uh, I wonder if there's going to be a conference game in between those Same two games. You. Yeah, there should be, right? They do that. Start. They, yeah. Don't they play Two early ones? I don't think they're going to have time to play two early ones this year unless they play like December 24th and 27th or something. Maybe they'll play on Christmas in, against the Big Ten team. They had Christmas games last year. Christmas is on a uh, Saturday. Friday, Saturday. Mm-hmm. 23rd is a Thursday, 24th is a front. Nailed it. One try. How about that? Took me like 17 seconds. Uh, my takeaways, a lot of home games, seven home games, uh-huh. three quote-unquote neutral site games, and one away game. So that's 11 games. Um, real quick before we get to this, you say 11 and one non-conference, even though it's 11 games. Uh, your thoughts? Um, well, if you add them up, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11, if they win the game against uh, Cincinnati – then they will play. Oh, never mind. Okay. <laughs> Are 10, and one. 10 and 1. 10 and 1. Who are they going to lose to? Arkansas? Arkansas. It's my loss. Yeah. I thought, I didn't know you had that on the, I, I was confused. I think 10 and 1 would be good. Um, I'm thinking more like 9 and 2. I think they're going to have one of those stinky, stupid losses that they shouldn't have. Maybe yeah. against uh, Missouri again or or Arizona. Yeah. So. And this was, this was uh, early unofficial. Um, Unofficial, yes. So, we'll, so, we'll so this doesn't really count right now. It does not um, count. No. I'll, I'll really dive deep into it later when we absolutely actually put absolutely. this together. So, so watch party wise, how many think you'll be able to? How many do you think we'll be able to do out of the all, eleven? All of them. That's a little ambitious. <laughs> the first two, there's no point. This, the third one, maybe Marquette. Even yeah, though it's a Monday, we're I definitely think doing Marquette. Um, the Hall of Fame Classic. I would like to do Arkansas. If they get to that game, yeah. Or if, oh. if they play K State, that would be a fun one just because of uh, Mark Smith being mm. an absolute loser and Bruce Weber. Uh, Texas, Dame. Rio Grande Valley, nobody cares. Uh, Notre Dame, we could do Arizona. I don't really care either way on that one. I'm just going to be bitching about Sean Miller, even though he won't be there. Right. Mizzou, whether you go or not, if you don't, we'll do yeah, it. We'll and then we'll try to do some big team games as well. But I guess that's the end of the episode. 45 minutes, pretty much perfect. So let's get 20 seconds in so I can hit it right at 45. So it looks good. There you Any go. final thoughts? Uh, No. When will we be back? And what are we going to do when we come back? I think that uh, probably I mean, you think we wait another month and then we're like a month out. And then we we get all our predictions together. Yeah, I guess maybe we could slip a Q and A episode in between there if we can get some questions from the folks. I'm sure people yeah. really want to know our opinions. So yeah, 
All right, we'll be back episode 71 at some point. We might get to 100 within the next couple of years if we do a lot this season. We'll, we'll get close, but if yeah. they make it further in the tournament, that would help. So maybe they could pull that off for us just for that only, nothing else. But all right, episode 71, we'll be back in like a month, third or less, and we'll find out. Follow us at a podcast line on Twitter, and we'll see you then.